Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. Uh, today's video probably isn't really for you as the barbecue enthusiast, but more for your better half. So if you want to tag them in it or share it on social media, over to them so they get their eyes on it. Uh, but today we're gonna to go over some pretty cool uh, barbecue gift ideas. So these are things that I have that I find useful on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and if you don't have them, I can guarantee that you're gonna like them. So first up, we're gonna get the most obvious one out of the way, and that is the Thermapen. Like you knew this was gonna be in here. So no matter who I'm talking to, if they are first time barbecues, they just bought the barbecue, now they want to dive down the rabbit hole of buying gear for it. The first thing I will always tell them to buy is a Thermapen. Now a Thermapen, in my mind, is the best instant re thermometer in the world. Uh, not sure if that's been scientifically proven, but for the purposes of this video, it is the best thermometer in the world. Uh, I've had the same one for years. It has never let me down. I've changed the battery on it once. It reads the temperature perfect every time. It reads it fast. It is accurate. Uh, it withstands dog's abuse. Uh, this thing gets thrown around or knocked off benches everywhere, uh, and it always lasts. It is the one thing that will improve your cooking. If you're not cooking at the minute with an instant read thermometer, you need to. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have videos explaining it, which I will leave links to in the description. But Thermapen uh, is the best one out there. Now, being the best one out there, they are probably a little bit more expensive than most. But think of it as a more of a long-term investment. If you buy it, you're buying it once and it's covered. Uh, there are cheaper versions out there of uh, other branded thermometers. I have some of them and they never last. Uh, they're usually pretty flimsy. They end up snapping or bending or the insides of them just don't work. Uh, never had that issue with this. So if you haven't got one, definitely grab it. To sweeten the deal a little bit, I do have a discount code for them. So at the minute, the Thermaparam Professional is I think 6480. Hold on to consult my notes. Yep, the Thermapen is 6480 on the Thermapen website. If you enter barbecue-20 at checkout, you will get 20% off. Uh, now that doesn't work with anything that's already discounted, so you can get these in sort of funky colors and they'll do offers on them every now and again. Or you can get the Thermapen, this is a Thermapen Professional, you can get the Thermapen Classic, uh, which is a little bit cheaper as well, but you lose out some of the functions that this has. Um, I've talked about this endlessly on the channel, so I'm not gonna go into it now. Just trust me, if you don't have one, or if your better half who's into barbecue doesn't have one, get one. Oh, and remember to buy the holster for it. A holster, is it, is it a holster? The wall mount uh, for the shack. It's so handy having it right beside the barbecue. Never gets lost. Okay, another one of my favorite things, something I've only been into for uh, probably just over a year and that is cast iron. Not just a lump of cast iron, but cast iron cookware in general. So the first ones I got were these lodge pans. Uh, these are 10 and a quarter inch skillets. Great size for most barbecues. They fit onto the KJ really well. They fit onto a kettle really well. Uh, and lodge is a well-known name uh, when it comes to uh, brands of cast iron. Uh, so I can highly recommend those as a good starter one. People always ask, do I go for a Dutch oven or do I go for a skillet? I would use a skillet 10 times to every one time I use a Dutch oven. So definitely go skillet first if you have nothing. Those are really handy pans to have. But this one here, which is from Petromax, this is a 35 centimeter skillet. If you're using this on a Weber kettle, do not buy the version of it with a handle because it will not fit below the lid. Uh, they do these, they're called fire pans uh, with a handle on each side, they're a short handle. These are the ones you want to go for. Um, 35 centimeter size is massive so you can fit loads into this. Uh, it sits perfectly on a Weber kettle, it fits the uh, Kamado Joe really well. Uh, Petramax have such an amazing range of stuff as well. Uh, most of it is available on Amazon, they have their own site as well. So I will leave links in the description to the bits that I have. I have this, I have their Dutch oven, the FT6, I believe it is, which is a six quart Dutch oven. 
Uh, I have the little uh, small skillet with the handle on it too, and a few other bits and pieces. So all the links will be in the description. But cast iron cookware is infinitely useful on a barbecue. Um, you can use it indoors, but we're not fans of cooking indoors in this channel. So I have never met a barbecuer who is sad to receive a piece of cast iron. Go for it. All right, on to the next one. And this is one that I have only recently upgraded and I don't think I can actually look back. And even at that, I've only taken baby steps into it as well. And that is knives. So knives may seem like a pretty basic utensil, uh, but not all knives are created equal. Uh, there are some super expensive, nice knives out there. And uh, definitely, if you can afford it, grab one. You won't be disappointed. Good quality steel will last you a lot longer than using cheap knives and sharpening them to within an inch of their life. Uh, a good blade will keep a nice sharp edge on it for longer and it's much easier to resharpen whenever you need to. So you don't have to break the bank with it. Most people need one or two good knives that they'll use all the time. I definitely recommend starting with a chef's knife because it can do most things. Then you might want to move on to a slicer or something like that. So I got started with a, a kit. Um, and they are Victorian ox knives. So this is the one I would use most. This is the one you've probably seen in the video quite a bit. Um, but this was a kit with a thick one, two, one, two, three, four, five knives in it. Uh, they weren't overly expensive, but going from, I had a set of Denby knives before this, uh, which we just had in the house before I ever started barbecuing. Uh, I sharpened them up, but they never stayed sharp. Uh, so the quality of the steel on this blade, uh, once you sharpen it, it stays sharp for a lot longer and they're pretty robust knives as well. Um, they're well known uh, within the chef community and kitchens and things like that will always use them. Um, you get a few different versions, these are ones just with a, a regular plastic handles on them. You can get different ones with chunky plastic handles on them or you can get wooden handles and they go right up the range. But if you're looking a good entry point to get in there, that little kit that I have is pretty good. Uh, but unfortunately, I am addicted now, so I'm going to have to get myself more knives. So I'll leave links to that in the description. I'm waving a knife about, not good. On another little thing, magnetic knife holder out in the shack. So handy. All right, moving along to another cooking item. And we are talking about these bad boys. Uh, they're not swords, they're not arrows, they are skewers. Um, they're actually Russian skewers. Um, they're massive long skewers. They fit right across the KJ or they'll fit right across the 57 centimeter kettle. Uh, I've seen uh, Nathan and Jim and uh, Phil from Love the Barbecue, all of them using these. And I don't know why it took me so long to get them, but since I've had them, they are amazing for using kebabs. Go and check out Phil's uh, Instagram page and his website. You'll see how much use he gets out of these cooking over his kettle. Uh, so they're not expensive, they are, trusty notebook again, I can't remember numbers for loving their money. Skewers, 18 quid, 18 quid for a set of four on Amazon. Um, they're super handy, nice chunky, they're heavy, so whenever they're sitting across with a load of meat on them, they're not bending down too much. Definitely a great little stock and filler gift. Um, if you've allowed them to buy the Kamado Joe for Christmas, then maybe get these on top of it. So skewers, again, I will leave, I stop waving sharp things about in this video. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check them out. Definitely worth the buy. Okay, now the next one is another obvious one and that is books. Now, I don't, I don't cook from books really as much as I probably should. I tend to do a lot of my cooking for the channel and because I can't share uh, other people's recipes in the channel, it kind of steers me away from uh, cooking out of books. However, Whenever the notion takes me, and sometimes I'll just decide to cook for the fun of it. I'm not recording it, not taking photos. I will cook a few recipes from books, so I always like to have them on hand. Uh, I am going to recommend that you go and check out uh, Nathan's website, so Kung Fu Barbecue. I will leave links in the description for it. He has quite possibly every barbecue book or cookbook that has ever been brought out, and I'm pretty sure he has cooked every recipe from those cookbooks. So if you want to see what the recipes are like, uh, recreate it. Nathan has cooked most of them, he types up all his notes. His website is invaluable. Uh, it's like the Amazon review for barbecues. So check out Nathan's site, pick out some books. He has a few favorites on there uh, and I completely trust what he says about them. All right, next up we're talking barbecue courses. Now it's fair to say 2020 hasn't exactly been a year for uh, group meetings by any stretch of the imagination. But hopefully as we come back into 2021, 
uh, restrictions will lessen a little and allow those demo days and courses to come back again. Now I have my online course, if you want to give it a go, Barbecue Basics. If they're just starting out with barbecue, then it teaches them all the fundamentals. Uh, so again, links in the description for that. There's also, uh, I say my good friend Jim, he started classes, uh, some of them did get put off by uh, COVID, but he got managed to get all them people that had signed up for it put through it eventually whenever the restrictions lessened a little. He has assured me that they will be back in 2021 as soon as he gets the go ahead to do them and can do them safely for everybody. Nobody wants to go to a barbecue day and end up with COVID. But courses and experience days, uh, whilst they may be in the future and they might not be the most exciting thing to unwrap on Christmas day, uh, they're invaluable whenever it comes to the actual experience of seeing how other people cook and cooking along with them. All right, the next one might be a little bit niche. Um, and really whenever I got it, I probably thought, oh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use this, but I do use it quite a lot throughout the year for a few different reasons. And that is a meat grinder and sausage stuffer. Now I have the Kenwood one that goes on to our Kenwood mixer. My wife is an avid baker, so we had a mixer in the house anyway, and it was her who actually bought me the grinder and sausage stuffer for Christmas uh, a few years back. And instantly the grinder itself is so handy, especially if you make your own burgers a lot, so you can buy your own uh, cuts of meat and grind them down, you know exactly what's going in there. It saves you having to ask the butcher to do it every time. Uh, but the sausage stuffer is so interesting, it's such, there's so many different varieties of sausage you can make out there and it's a bit of a wormhole once you go down it, so when I first got it, uh, I made quite a lot of sausages to the point where everybody was sick of eating them. Some of them were a disaster, some worked really well, uh, but it's a great thing to learn how to do and read up a little bit about it, so definitely I can recommend that as a, a sterling present for anybody who is into barbecue because it is infinitely useful. And if you don't have a mixer, well, buy the mixer too and get the grinder attachment along with it. Right, next up, I, think, I, don't, I don't know what number this is. I don't even think I've numbered any of these, but we're talking about this, the Pro-Q cold smoke generator. Covered in black, dirt now. Uh, so this allows you to cold smoke on your barbecue. I put a video out a few weeks back with this in it, uh, showing you how to cold smoke cheese and nuts. Uh, but you fill this full of wood dust, put a little tea light in here and it will burn slowly out round, giving off smoke but not giving off any heat or very little heat. So in the winter when things are a bit miserable and the temperatures have dropped, this here uh, opens up a world of something different you can try or cook in the barbecue. So you might not get to spend as much time sitting out beside the barbecue but you can definitely put it to good use with one of these. Uh, they're not expensive, I think they're 35 quid. You can get a few bags of dust for not too much either and you're off for the races. Uh, it's really easy to do. You can do uh, cheese, nuts, butter, garlic. The worms your oyster. Or can you do oysters? I don't know if you can do oysters. Uh, the other thing then that opens up is to do your own bacon. So you can do your own bacon anyway and cure it, but as barbecue lovers, we like our smoke. So uh, this will allow you to smoke your own bacon then after you've cured it. Uh, again, just another avenue of something you can try and opens it up. Uh, you might not have ever thought of it, but trust me, once you start it, it is good. So links below to that, Pro-Q cold smoke generator, a definite win on the gift list. And that brings me to my last one. And I have a feeling out of everything on this list, uh, quite a lot of guys would probably give everything else on the list up for this one thing and that is a barbecue shack. Now, you're maybe thinking, how am I supposed to buy an hour half a barbecue shack? But you don't, you merely give them permission to build one in the backyard. That's all the gifts you need. That's such an easy present, it's easy to wrap up. Just write it on a piece of paper, you can build a shack in an envelope. Merry Christmas. So this is the one thing that most people want. Uh, they always have an idea in their head, that we spot in their garden where they think, Oh, that was so Northern Ireland, a wee spot in their garden. They have a wee corner in their garden where they think, uh, oh, I could build a shack there, and they imagine what they would do the roof of, and what the other benches would look like, and how their gear would all fit into it. Just say yes, just let them go and build it, and uh, you will have many meals all year round, and you'll enjoy food uh, without the torture of standing out through the wind and rain to cook it. And realistically, it doesn't cost a lot. I know most people, whenever they start thinking about it, they think, oh, it's going to cost a few thousand pounds. And some shacks, I'm sure, do cost a few thousand pounds. Um, but if you're just looking at something basic to keep the wind and rain off you, uh, mine, I think, 
it cost between three and four hundred pounds in total. Uh, now, in fairness, I built most of it myself, a little bit of help from dad, uh, but there's not a lot materials wise goes into it. If you are in any way handy with your own hands, you can build it. Um, but the actual materials themselves, these are pallet boards, cost nothing. Uh, a couple of posts and a few lengths of 3 by 2 and 4 by 2 and it's done. The most expensive thing I think was actually the sheets on the roof. Uh, so I think it was about 90 quid to get those uh, three sheets. But that was it, everything else was pretty cheap. So just let them build a shack. That's all I ask. That's the best Christmas present you can give anyone. So I hope that gave you a few ideas of what you might be able to uh, buy your significant other uh, this Christmas uh, if they are into barbecue. Um, there's plenty more out there. Again, that's just a few things that I own personally and I know I like. Everyone's taste may differ, but that will at least give you my opinion on the matter. So remember to check out all the links below. I will leave details for the Thermopen website. You can click through. Remember, enter barbecue 20 barbecue 20 to get 20% off. Uh, I'll leave a link over to my Amazon store where I've gathered most of those other bits and pieces uh, together into one place so you don't have to go searching for them. Heads up, those are affiliate links. So if you buy through those, uh, I get a little bit of a kickback. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It doesn't affect anything about the order. Everything's the same. I just get a little bit in the back end to keep these lights running. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.